You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Uh, we are broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios. We're brought to you this hour by Extreme Exteriors. And uh, we have uh, been telling you uh, uh, all throughout the show of this one uh, news article that, to me, I think just kind of takes the cake today <laughs> uh, with the state of Nevada um, just going too far in micromanaging homeowner associations. Yeah. Um, we... Uh, would love to hear from our listeners, though, today, too. Yep, 651-289-4488. You still have plenty of time to call us with questions and comments. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, get into this bill. This is uh, with uh, the state of Nevada now. Mm-hmm. It's uh, called Senate Bill 185. Um, I have uh, got to believe it's uh, probably... Uh, there's uh, This is a bill that uh, has uh, that comes up quite frequently, and I think there is proposed changes almost every year that the state legislature uh, keeps uh, wanting to uh, change and tweak. And uh, we're finding th- we're finding that out. That seems to be coming uh, the norm and more common. Um, anytime anything is decried, anything that uh, comes out where one person uh, may have been wronged, um, I think state legislators are trying to put together uh, an atmosphere that's unrealistic, mm-hmm. one in which they say we're going to try and create this bubble so that nothing goes wrong. Uh, you won't have to deal <laughs> with any any issues, and um, you know that's just life. Uh, I don't know that you're going to be able to uh, correct all the wrongs. Obviously, if something isn't right, uh, it needs to be addressed. But people are are getting so quick to want to change. I know, don't and you I, think? I guess it just it helps justify the legislature. Tours work and their life's work is if uh, they can come up with legislation for every ill a mm-hmm. constituent raises. Yeah. But you know, I see this tendency in homeowner association boards as well. They want to draft Good rules. <laughs> they want to draft rules that are the be all and end all. And once they get them down on paper, nothing will ever ever go wrong in their association again and they will agonize and they will tweak and they will get more and more restrictive rules mm-hmm. on paper and i remember telling one board president here's the thing you you can keep spending all your time doing this but n- this year new homeowners are going to move in they don't know anything about That's these right. rules and it's an edu- it's going to be an education process teaching them and pointing out to them and that oh she just she just rolled her eyes she was so disappointed to hear that that it probably was not going to happen where everything would run smoothly from henceforth you know i think you make a good point uh, tony yeah. and that is that um i think it it seems like it's uh, human nature for people to want to say well here it is. I've now created something that will address everything. There's a part of us that would feel so good I know. Well, if me too. we know that it, that could be done. At oh. least that this one problem is solved forever. That it, would be nice, too. So anyway, let's uh. talk about what uh, Nevada is uh, right. uh, offering in Senate Bill 185. Section 16 specifically states that uh, it would not allow an association, get this, to establish a fee or charge for goods and services that exceeds the amount established by the Commission for Common Interest Communities. That is flippin' scary. Who are these people on this commission? What do they know? In our experience, we know that people in government know almost nothing about homeowner associations and how they're operating. And these people are going to set a maximum fee that homeowners... How how do you do this? When one homeowners association is six units that shares a sidewalk Uh and another association is 250 units that has tennis courts, beachfront, swimming pools, community rooms, how do you do this? I I take it you're as upset as I am over this. This is crazy. (laughs) This is insanity that you're going to let the government set a maximum level for your income. I agree. To to think... That um, there is going to be uh, an organization, they call it the Commission for Common Interest Communities. And you're right. Number one, who are they? How do they get appointed? Who appoints them? Do homeowners and homeowner associations uh, get to vote for these people that are now going to tell them what they can and can't charge? This is the Commission for Common Interest Communities, Governor's 
brother-in-law speaking. Are, yeah, exactly. Right? And, and do and will any of these people have experience living in a homeowners association? <laughs> I don't. Serving on a board of directors. Well, we know we know versus... that that generally speaking, there's only a small population of 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 legislators and and government officials that live in homeowner associations. And unfortunately, they do not seem to be the people that are drafting legislation about homeowner associations. And I suppose that's because why legislators don't get along with anybody, do they? There so, you go. So there, there you go. They're, they're the ones on the 40 acres out in the yeah. All right. Okay, so that that's a uh, Tongue in cheek, but this isn't I, the idea that there's going to be a commission now that's going to tell someone uh, you can charge this amount to rent out your community room, your party room, and uh, this amount is okay. This amount is too much. Uh, the fact that uh, you need a new uh, door clicker for your garage door opener for underground parking, uh, I'm sorry, thirty five dollars is too much. We're only going to allow you to. Uh, to charge twenty seven ninety five, and why? Going, you know, is that's that what going, they think is going to happen? That they're going to get this detailed about what every item on an on a association's not even we're not even talking about every budget item. We're talking about every single purchase. Well, li- listen again. Section sixteen would not <sighs> allow an association to establish a fee, fee. or charge for oh my goods gosh. and services. So it's for both. Uh, for goods and services, anything that exceeds the amount established by the Commission for Common Interest Communities, here is uh, probably what's going to happen. It goes on to say that if the Commission has not established a fee, well, then the association, of course, is free to charge whatever the actual cost is. But if actual cost is one thing, and the commission says uh, we disagree, Right. then that means the association is going to have to lose money. And if the association loses money, are you as that uh, individual homeowner served? No, because guess what? You're going to have to still ante up because at the end of the you know day, what? your association is still owned by you and all your other uh, owners, right. and you're all going to have to come up with the deficit. And guess what? I believe this is true in Nevada, as it is in Minnesota. A homeowners association is a nonprofit corporation, so it is already legislated as a nonprofit corporation. It's governed by its own governing documents, which say you cannot pay make a profit in this yeah. community. You can only charge what you need to pay your bills, and informed. Involved homeowners yeah. should be watching the bottom line. Oh, I know. Right hey, here, here's another uh, uh, item. Section 17, and, and why do they even get involved with this? Section 17. There's a prohibition in the state of Nevada for an association from being able to use a radar gun to determine a vehicle speed when driving within the association. Now, my reaction to this one was was kind of positive. Because I thought, you know, a radar gun is a law enforcement tool. So uh-huh. who's going to be manning this radar gun? And are they qualified to read the results? And they're not an, a law enforcement official. So can this be actually enforced? That was my response. Well, maybe a radar gun is going too and, far. Uh, and, uh, and I'll tell you, uh, number one, I don't think it's rocket science to read the results. It says uh, <laughs> what the, the, the speed you looks just, think so? <laughs> I think the speed looks just the same as on your speedometer of okay. your vehicle. okay. Number, I've never seen one. And so n- number two, the thing that uh, I don't think uh, the state legislature is recognizing here in uh, common interest communities, in townhomes, uh, in condominiums, many times, the reason why it is allowed is you're talking about uh, a density of population and of homes that's greater than would normally be allowed. Because of that, there have to be compromises in the street sizes. Okay. Therefore, the city uh, will not take over those streets. Many of them will be considered private streets. And when they're a ah. private street, now they are not, their ownership is of the association, not of the city. And you'll find jurisdiction with the police uh, not, um, uh, okay. not, not being involved with those You're areas. Right. And the association is now responsible because if you called uh, the uh, the police and said, Someone was speeding. Well, where sure. was it? Well, that's a private road. I'm sorry. That's that's we don't. Yeah. That's not our jurisdiction. Or, you know, you're right. Or even, and I've had this happen. Someone's parked in the fire lane. Yeah. You cannot call the city and have the police come out and ticket them because it's a private 
street. Yeah. So you're right. The the police aren't taking care of these. Streets. So so these are things that aren't happening. There's okay. more, but you know what? We got to take one last break, okay. and when we come back, we're going to finish on uh, Senate Bill 185 in Nevada. These folks are something else. Back after this. <laughs>